an S on the end. She says, why do I got an S on her? Like, she got a little jar. Of, why, why would I need to go get vessels when I'm looking at this little jar of oil? He said, go, go borrow vessels. Listen to this. And don't just get a few. Woo! What are you talking? You're crazy. And he keep looking over to the little jar of oil. He said, I want you to go get every vessel in town. And don't just get a few. Don't just get a few. Don't just get a few. And so go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Listen to this. This will preach. <laughs> empty vessels. Anybody ever been an empty vessel? How many know you're working with empty vessels right now? And they may look good on the outside, but they're as empty and dry as a well. You know, this dry as a desert. They're empty. And he says, go gather the empty vessels. And don't just get a few. And you're still looking at this little jar of oil. And so the sons, they go out and they get, they just start bothering or borrowing and borrowing and borrowing. Don't just, not just getting a few. And how many, how many think, you talk about faith. How many think that take a little faith? And every time you carry one more vessel and you look over at that little thing of oil, you're like, this is crazy. But go get some more. <laughs> and they go get some more empty vessels, empty vessels, empty vessels, empty vessels, broken vessels. All kinds of vessels. And so they went and they got them all. And then look at verse 4. And when, when, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you. And let me just say this. We've been talking about distractions. We've been talking about keeping your appointments. You said when you go in and pray, go into the bedroom, shut the door. What you're going to need to shut the door on is the naysayers who've always been telling you, you can't do that. You can't be that. You can't go there. You can't preach like that. You can't sing like that. You can't minister. God couldn't heal through you. You better shut some doors, amen? You say, I'm shutting that out. I'm, I'm going to slam the door right in the face of the naysayers. How many, how many people were watching this? They were probably, this, these people are crazy. They must go over to that church over there. <laughs> you know, but they, these people are crazy. When, how many think what I'm saying? People said, what are they doing over there? That's weird stuff, you know. And so anyway, I'm just going to go on here. And it says, and, uh, and shut the door behind you and your sons, and then pour into those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, and she brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. And you've seen, somebody's seen me doing this before. But just think of the faith it would take to bring, like, let's just say a 55-gallon drum that's empty. And they bring it in, and they set, set it to you, and you, you're looking at that 55-gallon drum, and then you look over at the little thing, oh, well. And then you look at the 55-gallon drum, and you look at the oil, and he said, pour. See, what do you got? In? Nothing but this little tiny jar of oil. I'm, I'm just telling you guys, I don't know if you're ready for this. The miracle doesn't start till you take the little you have and start to pour. See, you're waiting for more, 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 more. Well, how about just take what you got and start using it, amen? And she grabbed that little thing and walked over that 55-gallon drum and I want to see this when I get to heaven, amen. It's probably on videotape, amen. It's probably on DVD now, yeah, because we've upgraded. And she starts pouring. And she probably just holds it with one little pinky up, you know, because it's just like tiny. Yeah, probably about that big right there. And she just starts pouring. And it just keeps coming out. It just keeps quiet because she's using the little she has. You give him something to eat. And she starts pouring and pouring and pouring, and the next thing you know, it's three quarters full, and the next thing you know, it's starting to flow over. She says, son, son, get another one over here, you know, and she, they pull another one, and they pour that one, and they just keep going and going, and she's just pouring this little oil, and they're bringing the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until the next thing you know, they only got one little one left. They bring it over, fill it up, and boom, the minute they ran out of empty vessels, the oil stopped. And I'm just telling you, you guys, what's in your house? You say, well, I ain't got nothing. You know, well, you're not going to find out what's really in there until you start using the little that you have. And, and let me just say one of my favorite sayings in all the world. I got that. Louis, anybody ever hear of Louis L'Amour? 
He's like a famous author and probably written over 200 books. I guess something like that, hundreds of books. And I ain't written one, so, so I've, ha- I've thought about it, I've talked about it. But, but they asked him, they said, man, we just need to ask you, how in the world do you write 200 books? And he said, oh, it's easy. He said, I just sit down and get a piece of paper. And I start writing. And then he said this, the water doesn't flow, the oil doesn't flow till you turn on the faucet. So you're waiting for God to do something great and mighty, and he's waiting for you. Why don't you just turn on the faucet? Why don't you take the little you have and start pouring? Find you, hey, how about this? Go find you an empty vessel and pour yourself out. And the next thing you know, there comes another empty vessel. Next thing you know, like, it's flowing out of you like a river now. What started with a little jar of oil just comes rolling out. And just keep, see, that's what I'm, you know what I love about this? We just keep getting more empty vessels. And I get to get up every week and come in and pour out and pour out. And you guys pour out. We all pour out together. Next thing you know, they bring us another empty vessel. And somebody says, oh, there's an empty bed. I'm good. Well, go get an empty vessel. Go get an empty vessel and let's pour into it. But here's the, here's the thing. And I'm gonna, I might talk about this Friday. I don't know for sure. But see, a lot of you have already been through this shift. But some of you need to go through the shift where you're not thinking about, you know, somebody else feed them. Somebody feed me. How about you give them something to eat? When are you going to shift? When's it going to stop being all about you and start being about somebody else? Amen. Because I'm telling you, the path to healing is getting your eyes off yourself and getting your eyes on somebody else, amen? Now, don't get me wrong. You got, to, you got to get healed and you got to do all that, but I'm just really believe the reason people don't get healed is they never get over themselves, and they never get over their past, and, they, and, and that ain't easy to do. I'm not making light of that, but I'm telling you, God can get you over your past, and it ain't that hard. You just got to let it go. You won't let it go. Come on, how long are you going to be defined by who you are and what happened to you 20 years ago? Letting it control your life, even to this day. And to me, you know, it's, at some point you got to let it go, okay? And, and I know I'm making some people mad here. I don't know, but I hope not because you guys are really friendly people, and nice people, but I don't know who's watching out there. But I'm just saying, I want to help people. You don't want to help people? And, and, if, and you, you, you're going to keep your appointment with your destiny. You're going to have to get rid of some stuff in your past. And you're going to have to say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm taking responsibility. And I'm going to take the little I have. And I'm done with that stuff. And I'm going to move on. I'm going to forgive everybody. I forgive everybody ever hurt me. I forgive everybody. And, and I'm not saying you forget it. I just say you got to let it go, you guys. And then take what you have and say, man, I ain't got much. Well, you got something. You got breath, you got life, you got hands. Go carry somebody's groceries across the street. Do something. And, you know, people say, how do I find my calling, my, my ministry? Well, I'll tell you how you do it. Go find the need and fill it. I said, well, that ain't what I'm, well, I don't care what it, right? That's how you get there. You go find the need and fill it. So, oh, I'm waiting for my perfect job. Well, you might need to go work at McDonald's for a little while. Until that perfect job comes along, amen? <laughs> you know, and, and, and then, but if you're faithful to do the little thing, take what you have and use it. Let me tell you, like Joyce Miles says, you can't drive a parked car. Have you ever tried to steer if you go out in one of them cars on that asphalt? Nick, you got your Camaro out there? Oh, okay, you kept it in the garage, huh? Yeah. But if you go out there in one of them cars sitting idle, just not even started on the, on the pavement, and you take the wheel and even turn the key, you know where to turn. Try to turn it on that pavement. It's hard, isn't it? Because there's, there's, there's friction and it's not moving. But as soon as that car starts to roll, what happens to the steering? Freeze it up, doesn't it? So you can't drive a parked car. Some of you have been in park too long. <laughs> Somebody need to put the thing in drive and say, I'm going somewhere. I'm tired. Of, I, I've been sitting here for a long time. I've been sitting in this church pew a long time. Ain't done a thing. Maybe I need to put that thing in drive and say start to, and the minute you start to do something, the minute you find a need and fill it, 
then God's going to start directing your path. And you're going to find out real quick, just like Joyce Meyer said. She went and helped out in the, in the children's ministry a couple weeks, and she found out real quick, that's not my calling. And I'll help out any time, but anywhere, that's not my path. And then she went over here and helped, and then she went over here and helped. And all of a sudden, she walks in, and bam, there's a passion. There's a love. Man, I love this. I can't wait till next Sunday so I go do this. But how do you get there? You may have to start over here and take the little you have and do something. Okay? And I'm running out of time. And, uh, and we know the story. Like, they sold all the oil, paid off all their debt. But what a, what a lesson, you guys. What a lesson. Amen? Okay, and then I got one more. And this is my favorite, John uh, 6, 5 through 12. And actually, you know, we're done pretty much. And, uh, and, and so uh, this is the same story, but this is just a little bit different. Just a couple little things here. John chapter 6, verse 5. And this is the same story, I think, that's very similar to uh, John chapter 6, verse 5 through 12. And then we'll stop. It says, then Jesus lifted up his eyes. And see, this is, this is where I was getting at. You give him something to eat. But there again, what was, what was Elijah trying to do with the widow? Stretcher. Everybody say stretcher. Stretcher. Trying to help her realize, listen, you don't even know what's inside of you. You have no idea the power inside of you. You got Jesus Christ in you. You got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. You do. Well, that is if you're a child of God. And then you all raised your hand and said, you're a child of God. You got the same spirit in you, raised Christ from the dead. Against all the devil and every strong demon in hell couldn't hold Jesus in that grave. And that same spirit's in you. Amen? And so look, what it, this is interesting because this is different. And, and, a, and it says in, jo, in John 6, 5, Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing the great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these to eat? And now listen to this. This is amazing. Look at verse 6. But this he said to test them. Everybody say test. <laughs> See? And, you know, and how many know like when Elisha said to this woman, go get vessels, don't just get a few. Do you think that was a test? Do you think when he said, okay, now pour? You think that was a test of faith? Because how many of us are you crazy? I'm not going to take that little thimble thing of oil and pour into this big 55 thing. Well, and you would have never seen the miracle. And so he says this, and he said he said this to test them, for he himself knew what they would do. So why is he doing it? Because he's trying to teach them. He's trying to disciple them. He's trying to get them to step into who they really are and realize, listen, guys, if you only knew the power on the inside of you, if you only knew what was in you, child of God, you got the seed of God in you. And it says, and he did this because he knew what he, he knew what he would do. He, know, he, he already knew what he was going to do. Verse 7, and Philip answered him, 200 and a denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, and Peter, the brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has only five barley loaves and two small fish. And they say, but. That's an unholy but. <laughs> I think it's an unholy one because it was, but what is that among so many? You see what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing but this little jar. I mean, we got a little couple fish, and, you know, it's kind of like a happy meal from Long John Silver's. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, that's it. And we got 5,000 men and all the women and the kids. And how many think that's a great, how many, how many of us would have said the same thing? I mean, we got this little stuff here, but what is that among so many? And then, and then uh, I think that's a legitimate question from the natural standpoint. But he's trying to teach them. Then verse 10, Jesus said, make the people sit down. And there, there was much grass. And the, and the men sat down and numbered about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. And how many have heard of Rob, watched the Robert Morris thing? Yeah. It's good stuff, isn't it? 
The miracle didn't happen. And, and I'm done, you know, but the miracle didn't happen. So, so like, they get all these 5,000 men and all that. And some people believe there could be 10 to 12,000, whatever. And, and they still got these two fish and these five loaves. And Jesus takes it, blesses it. And guess what? It's still two fish and five loaves. He broke it, blessed it, distributed it to the disciples. And, and like Peter might, they give Peter like one little piece of bread. And he said, you see that 2,000 people over there? Go feed them. And he's, and he's looking at the bread, and it's like this much. And he's looking at the 2,000 people over there. And how many, how many think it took faith to walk toward, and these people are hungry too. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? And he starts walking towards this crowd. And he said, here. And he said, but just take a little bit. Because <laughs> they've got to go a long ways. But it, listen, here's my point. It wasn't until they had the faith to take the little that they had and start to give it away. And the next thing you know, he goes to the next group. And he's like, whoa. And then he goes to the next group. And he goes to the next group and the next group and the next group and the next group. And the Bible says, if you read the whole story, and I'm out of time, it says, they all ate until they were full. And how many baskets were left over? Twelve. One for each of the disciples. Yeah, you know, like just in case you don't believe this, take this home. Here's a doggy bag. You know, <laughs> take it home. But, but I love this. And then he said, and here's what Jesus also said. And I'm not going to get into that, but it's a whole other thing. It says, and after he was done, this is Jesus. He said, now, before we're done here, go gather up all the fragments that not any be lost. Can I tell you, the church in America is full of fragments. You work with fragments all around you. And they said, I'm done with the church. I'm done. I've been broken. I have been broken. I'm nothing but a fragment. And I, and, I, and I preached a whole sermon on the heart of a fragment. But that's why, you know, I was, I, I was talking to Spencer a while ago, and, and I said, I, when, when I see a man broken and weeping and tears running down his face, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. That is, a, that is a, not a weakness that is a strength. See, the heart of a fragment, God says, I want it. Don't throw it away because that's where I can do my best work with broken stuff, fragmented stuff, stuff that's already been crushed, stuff that's already been broken. Because let me tell you, the heart of a fragment, it is not full of pride. It's not full of arrogance. Amen. It doesn't think it has a need of nothing spirit. It's like, man, I am broken. I am crushed. And if God don't help me, if somebody don't come pick me up, I'm worthless. And he said, go gather up the fragments. See, I believe God's going to use this church and a lot of other churches to say, listen, I think the fragments are going to get, start getting, get, I saw some of it Sunday. I believe God's going to bring the fragment. And we're going to, but, let, but he, one thing that says, he said, you go gather them up, though. How many think that's important? And I think God's going to begin to do work. But here's what I'm saying. Like, there's a whole world out there that, that a lot of, you know, we, we're trying to reach. And how many think it's full of fragments? How many think it's full of empty vessels, full of broken vessels? And you say, what can we do? What can we do? And I'm saying tonight, what do you have in your house? And even like Friday night, you know, and I don't even know. It's going to be a little different Friday night. But I believe God's going to open up some doors for us to go out and minister and, and to, to, as a team and as a group and anybody who wants to in the church, anywhere, you know, I mean, it's not just Hannah's house. And, but I think this is the attitude we've got to have. You know, like, hey, we're just coming. We're going to take the little that we have. And we're going to pour it out. We're not, we're not coming to take. And, you know, I, I didn't get that far, but I was reading, and right before I came in here, I, I went to Matthew 10, where Jesus said he gave them power to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. Then it says, and he took the 12, and he sent them out two by two. And he told them, you know, I'm giving you power. Go 
to the to the tribe of Israel, you know, first, and then then he said this, and as you go, you know, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse the lepers. And then he said this freely you have received. Freely do what? Ever say give. See, there's a shift. There's a shift when you're no longer taking all the time. Now, don't get me wrong. Is there always a need that I need to receive, I need to take in, take care of yourself? I'm not talking about that. But there's a shift when you get a heart uh, to, to give them something to eat. You become the one that's coming not to take but to give. But can I tell you a, a little secret here? When you step into that category, when you go to give, you go to be a blessing, guess what? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. See, you came to do the ministering, but you end up getting ministered too, amen? You come to give the blessing, you walk away blessed more than anybody else, amen? I used to go to the nursing home, and now sometimes I had a bad attitude, and I'd take little Lena and set her up on the stage and, you know, on the little chairs, sing Jesus Loves Me, and I'd have a bad attitude, and I'm like, man, I won't go to the nursing home today and sing the same songs I've sang 20 times and, you know, 50 times or whatever, and I kind of have a bad attitude, not all the time, but I've every once in a while. Anybody else have a bad attitude besides me? But you know what happened every time? I'd go in there, and the little old ladies would come out, and the guys would come out, and see the little kids, and we would sing, and then we'd sing Amazing Grace, and, and I'd just see the big old smiles, and they're, oh, we love you guys, and we hug you, and, and even with a bad attitude, because I went in there and did it. The next thing I know, I come out, and I said, whoa, that was awesome. See, how many know, when you go to be a blessing, you go to give, even the little that you may think you have, every single time, you know what's going to happen? You're going to fill that overflow, your vessel. And you just, next thing you know, man, I got more to give, more to give, more to give, and just keep bringing the empty vessels, amen? And we're just going to keep pouring into them, pouring into them in Jesus' name, amen?